Nobody say anything. Okay. Are we starting now? Is this is this the official start? Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody. This is about to triple the audience size I expected. So no pressure. Um, I'm here to talk about Paiu, the amazing climate workflow manager. Workflow is a pretty generic term, so you can call pretty much anything a workflow. So I like that. So I, I don't know how many of you have actually used it. Can I raise your hands? So quite a few. I'm not looking behind me. But. So all right. Well, I thought maybe I would kind of say what where it came from and what, why we did it first, just to kind of keep light and breezy at first. Oh, before, um, if you, can you guys see the URL at the very bottom? So you can open that up and look at those slides. Um, it's marshallward.org slash course, and you can just look at those um, if you don't want to stream this stuff. So um, saying that, um, where did it came from? The name is Python on Vayu. Vayu was the old computer before Raijin. Um, but Vayu is gone, but Paiu is not, and I'm not renaming it, so we're stuck with it. The other thing is it's not Payu which is a East European financial software package, <laughs> which snagged several, several precious names on the internet that I can no longer use. I, I did think about renaming this at one point, but I didn't get a lot of um, interest. So I just decided we'll just live with this. That's where it came from. So um, why, why do we have this tool? Well, it's because for a very long time, we were running lots and lots and lots of bash script. Well, scripts of all sorts, not just Bash. And it was getting to be a real problem. We had different models, we had different shells, we had different configurations. We were trying to make them clever and more clever, and it was really getting frustrating. So we really just, this was kind of before the days of version control, and even then I don't, well, version control is not very popular amongst our peers. It's a better way to put it. And um, I think it wouldn't have helped anyway. So I got some inspiration from a conversation with Andy Huck. So here's a picture of Andy doing some very important com computational science there. Um, he's working on Raijin, I think, right? Yeah, and, uh, yeah, just, yeah. I had to stream the YouTube just video to get that picture. Putting the uh, finishing touches on Raijin back then. So I remember chatting with Andy, like we were starting to use Python a bit, and we were making some scripts that were doing things other than calculation. And I think I showed them to Andy, and Andy made an offhand comment to me. He said, why don't we just do everything in Python? Why are we using all these dumb bash scripts for everything? And I think I took him a little too literally. So I went and made a program to run scripts in Python, to run models. So Paiu was not always in its current form. It, this is actually the second iteration. The first one is so horrible, I won't show it. But um, this was kind of the original intention. It was that you would write, I would, you know, we would not have how you run, we would not have scripts. You, I would not write your scripts. I didn't want to write your scripts. Um, you would write your own scripts, but you would have this Python module called Paiu that you would import and you would create instances of experiments and you would do little actions there. And this is a very stripped down version. And this was popular for a little while. Well, it was used for a little while. But um, it's not really where we ended up. We ended up in quite a different place where we have actually this application that just sort of runs everything for you. So I thought um, we could actually do a little demo together if everybody's comfortable with that. Um, so I have set up a little experiment. If you guys don't want to do this, that's fine. But I thought there's people here that have never used it before, right? So does everyone here have a Raijin account and log in and all that stuff and everyone's comfortable? Do people, do people want to do this or do you want me to just um, talk about it? I'll take that as a do it. <laughs> do it. Um, I need to get out of here. No, not there. There. Okay. Um, so um, you can go in. So I, I have to do something first in my environment. But um, yeah, we'll remove that. Okay. So if, if you go to your home directory and just make a directory called course, um, I'm going to delete that. Um, or you know, make a directory, call it, call it whatever you want. Just something in your home directory. I call it Paiu. You can call it Paiu. Um, I called it course. But what you can do is you can clone this run git on this command here. So 
I forgot the first letter. So if you do that, you will get that terrible error. No, you won't get that. Your ears will be fine. I have to do something. I, I was doing some testing for the class. Don't don't do what I'm doing right now. Yes, we are writing. Check copy paste the thing. Oh yeah, just copy and paste that command. That should work. And I will do that again. So if um, you need, I need what's how often? What's the good time to wait for people to do stuff? Should I just blow <laughs> off? W nine hundred. Yeah, yeah, MXW. Yeah, I, I mean, if you had the browser up, I would just copy and paste it. I wouldn't type it out. You might need to tell people about the URL again because yeah. I'm kind of like. Oh, okay. Do people know that it's up on the web? This talk. So I don't know how to make this bigger, unfortunately. But it's it's my name, marshallward.org slash PIU course. So all right, so I mean I'll if people can find that, I'll move on. But um so you have your first exper experiment there. It's called bowl one. It's a it's a mom mom five experiment. It's a simple ocean. So if we go inside it, we see a bunch of files and if people haven't, so people, you want to do a module load PIU if you don't have it. If you already have it up because you've used it before, that should be fine. Um, we did just update it today because we found a bug. But um, that, that issue aside, um, if you have PIU up, um, you can type PIU and just see what happens. If that works for everybody, that's, that's a little ugly. So. But um, if you just type PIU, it'll give you some very, very minimal help there, basically listing all the subcommands. If that is not working for anybody, just tell me and we can stop and try to get somewhere with that. Which, which version should we be using? I'm using a 0 0.8 something. <sighs> newest is best. Okay. No. This is the newest? Yeah, yeah, as of today. <laughs> okay. Um, you is know, I mean, if, if, if we have something that is broken and you have to go back to an old version, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a bug that we can fix. Yeah. So, you know, this isn't that kind of program where we, <laughs> we care about things like that. Like, like backwards compatibility. So what was the question? So is, can I point 9.2 replace PyDev, which mm. we were using? Mm. Okay. Use PyDev. That's fine. That's fine. Is that the question? Yeah. That's fine. That's yeah, good. like I said, I, we're not answer to the question. I was thinking about. It. We're not going to do anything uh, fancy, so it doesn't. You could probably use a really old version. Um, anyway, so if everyone's got that up, um, you can go inside the directory and just type PyU run. And you will get a big, big nasty Q sub command, um, which we turn on just for debugging, really. But um, we get some noise from the microphones. Can people mute the microphones if they're not using them? Probably Ryan. His screen is Ryan. lit up. No, he's muted. Right, thank you. Um, all right. Well, you can check that check that out and see that the job is queued. So there we go. So while we're waiting on that. Um, We'll kind of deconstruct what's going on here. So inside there, we have our config YAML file, which is sort of how we control the experiment. And then we have a bunch of other files. In, in the case of mom, these are the four files that you need to run the job. But in a sense, we don't care about those too much. We just assume those are given to us on a platter. All we care about is config YAML. Um, so if we look inside config YAML, um, what we will see is some information to control our job. You can put comments in with the little hash. Um, there's some stuff to control the scheduler, some stuff to control the job, and usually there's some other configuration stuff you can do. People want to know YAML. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get to that. Thank you. Um, this is in a file format called YAML, which is reviled in some parts of the internet, but I like it, so you're stuck with it. Um, it's basically a bit of a um, file format that lets you do key value stuff and make lists and make all the sort of structures that if you guys, everyone here's a Python programmer, it, it's sort of this, it maps on very well to Python actually, which is probably the main reason I like it. But um, it's basically, you can sort of define keys and values and create very malleable and adaptable configuration files that can grow quite easily over time. So I've found it very useful for this model. Um, it, it's less popular for jobs on the internet. So those people have a point. Um, 
But having said that, um, let's see if it ran. So it's still in the queue. That's great. OK. Uh, this is taking a little longer than I expected. Um, so while we're waiting on that, um, we'll, we'll imagine that it finished and we'll talk about it. And then when it's up, we'll, we'll map it in our heads. So what you should expect is um, two, two output files when you run it. One will be mom.out and one will be mom.error. And that's just the standard out and standard error of the job. You'll get two other files reported from PBS. Um, they're separate on default. Um, some, I, I don't know if any of you merge those files. I don't like to do it, but some people do. Um, that, that's a PBS setting. And then when it finishes, we would get two more outputs here that we could look at. So maybe instead of waiting on this, which is a shame, because it happened pretty fast when I did it, um, I'll go look for another one somewhere else. Uh, we'll go in here, an old bowl one. Nothing there. The bowl zero. Okay, well, that's, that's a bad example, too. Um, okay, kind of blew it here. Well, let me ask if there's questions. That, that's a nice way to waste time. <laughs> Is there any questions up to now? No, no, but that. Ah, you guys are. Oh, oh yeah. I got Paul. a question. Sorry, can you, like, what YAML is like, uh, it's like some sort of scripting language or something? What is it? Uh, it's more like a markup language. A markup it's, language, okay. Yeah, I mean, you can't program with it, so it's not a scripting language. It's, you, right. you know, it's JSON? Keys and values. It's just yeah, have you heard of values. JSON? No. All right, that doesn't help. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's just like, a way of declaring variables, pretty much, right? In a, in a, yeah, in a, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's probably the best way to put it. Yeah. This is a real pity. This is a real pity. <laughs> I, should, I, should, I shouldn't have deleted it. <laughs> I blew it. All right. Well, let's um, let's see where we're going. Let's see where we're going with this. Oh, oh yeah. All right. Oh, there we go. We're done. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Okay. It's a very fast job. Okay. So, so as you can see, um, so two files actually that I mentioned are not there. So I made one little mistake. Um, while you run the job, those out and error files do appear in that, in that control directory. And then when they're finished, they're moved into the archive. So there's a bit of a mistake on that. But we do see the PBS logs. So um, we'll full screen that. Uh, so um, this is a bunch of stuff that Paiu's done that it's logged into the file. This is the MPI command it ran. This is some Git stuff that I'll talk about later. Um, I don't know whether this to-do message is there. <laughs> but um, then, this, then you get your normal PBS output here. So um, this is all sort of to be expected, I think. Um, and this one should be, this one usually has your modules, the error log. Um, if we go inside archive, you see what you actually have. So, so the output is split into two pieces, a restart and an output. Go inside output, you see all your, your um, output files that you would get from mom. And the other two additional ones are the mom out and mom error. That is just your normal mom output saying I ran the model. Mom error is usually just a bunch of warnings. Um, and the restart file contains what you need to run the next job. So if we were to do the next n years or whatever months that we did, we would restart from that last file to the next one. So that's sort of one of the main jobs that Pi was doing for you. So um, where are we up to? We are up to here. So, so suppose we are finished and we want to get rid of all those dumb logs. We do Pi U sweep, not swept, sweep. And so those logs are gone. They're now in archive PBS logs. So now we've saved them in case we need them for anything. So the outputs are in archive and the PBS logs are in there. And so if NCI comes whinging at you about some bad thing you did, then you have those logs available. So the next thing you can do, since we're, we'll do it here, you can do a hard sweep. So I know there are some people who are afraid to run this because they don't know what it does. So <laughs> I'd like to clarify what it does. It wipes out everything in that archive directory. So before I wipe it, um, 
I want to show you where it is. It's actually not in your home directory. It's way back in short. So there's a directory in short. Um, so it's, sec it's classified under your model name and then archive. And then that's our experiment, goal one. So when I do Paiu sweep hard, it wipes that out. So now if I look in there again, it's still there. Why is it still there? <laughs> <laughs> what do I be like that? Is it? Is it? I don't know. There's another thing. Yeah, it's still yeah, but there's, uh, but there's nothing in there. Oh, I kept the log. There we go. I'm not an idiot. So, <laughs> so, so sweep does not wipe the logs, but it does wipe your output and your restarts. That's a surprise to me, actually. <laughs> but anyway, I, I've just, I guess my point is that sweeping does not wipe out all your inputs. It does not wipe out your executables. It does not wipe out all the things you care about. It just wipes out things associated with that run, except apparently logs. So that, that is us. We have run our very first PIO experiment, and we are now ready to go. So I thought um, if there's any questions, you know, if, any, if people tried that and it didn't work, we can talk about it. But otherwise, I'll kind of go into a little more detail on what's going on here. So as I said, first is, um, so first we have the control path. That's the directory that we have all our text files and stuff, where we control the model, where we change settings, time steps, and parameters, et cetera, and the config file. And that's kind of where we generally steer the model and direct it. And then we have the laboratory, which is where I showed you. It defaults under short, and then your project, then your name, and then the name of the model. In this case, mom. Wait, so, sorry, where are all these things? It's the, all these things are in config.yaml? These are not set. These are the defaults. Ah, OK. So by saying model mom and by not setting anything else like this, Ah. That that's where everything ends up. Okay. So that's sort of that's the the simple environment. If you don't like it, there's there's ways to change that. But that's sort of the layout that we do, and it's kind of deliberately because it's a way of kind of making people all behave the same way, because conformity is good. So, but um, if you don't want to conform, there are ways to be a rebel. Um, so in I wiped it, so that's, that was stupid. <laughs> But uh, we'll do another one. But um, if we want to go inside, inside, our, I think I'll go in. Um, I'll go in real mom. Um, so um, this is kind of what the lab path generally contains. It contains the archive, which we talked about, which holds the runs. I'll show you my archive, which is lots and lots of runs. And um, then we have the bin, which is all the executables. Now this is a bit of an older style where we just make our own executables and we manually put them in bin. I've never really been happy about that, but that's what we do right now. Um, I, I know Access OM2 tries to automate some of that process. But um, that aside, that, that's how, that's how Paiu handles it. it just, you just put executables in this directory named bin and then you tell Paiu to look for them. In there. Um, inputs are generally speaking lots of directories. So input, um, for NYF forcing has forcing fields and um, GFDL NYF 1080 is just grid data. So you can you can you can deconstruct those as you wish. Um, I mean, in, in particular, I do it that way so I can have certain directories shared with other runs. Um, and then finally, there's the work directory, which is any jobs that are running. Now, my work directory is not empty, and I'm not running anything. There's a reason, because if your job crashes, it stays there. So you have, if you don't manually PyU sweep that, um, those stay there. So PyU sweep, in addition to moving your logs, it also wipes out your crashed runs in work. So um, if you don't run PyU sweep, you have those runs there. That's, that's a good thing, because then if you have a problem, someone, either CMS or NCI or whoever, can come in and help you figure out why it crashed. Or you can do it yourself, which is even better. So that's that's how it looks. Um, as it says there, you can run PyU init to do this stuff, but I have found there's never a reason to do that, because most of the commands automatically create these things. Um, so looking at the configuration, um, the one field that you need is the model field. You have to tell it what the name of the model is you're running. And there's a, there's a list of those. If you do PyU list, it shows you the valid model names. 
there's a lot of models there. They don't all work, but you know, we wish they all worked. <laughs> You have UM and Nemo and WaveWatch and Gold and Size, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but you do need to match one of those keywords when you're running when you're running a model. I think you can do default, but that's that's a little weird. Because um, what's a default model? I think the idea was people would make, write their own models and then hopefully default would work. But um, you also gen you don't have to. Um, you generally want to assign a name to your model, your experiment. You don't have to. If you don't give it one, it will just use the name of the directory that you're in. But if you don't like that, um, you can you can give it a custom name. Um, again, the PBS stuff. You want to say what queue you want to run it in. You want to say the name of the job on the PBS queue. Again, you don't really need that. It will just use the job name if you don't put it. Um, the wall time, the CPUs. You know the normal stuff you do when you do queue sub. Um, the other thing is you have to supply it with an executable. So you have to tell it what executable you're running, and then you want to give it either an input directory or a list of input directories. So in YAML, to do a list, you do this da you do a dash, um, and each, each dash represents an element on the list. If you don't put the dash, it's just one value, but you guys don't have to worry about that. I, how you handles all that list versus individual value stuff. So you can either put it one directory there or multiple directories. Um, they can get complicated. The coupling model is a more complicated case. So in this case, they've set an explicit lab path. They're not using the default one. They're special. Um, this is actually something I use for testing. This is used to say that you're running on the Broadwell nodes. I'll get to that later. Um, the collation is a, is a post-processing step that I'm not going to talk about today, but there's a lot of configuration that goes on there. And this is a good example of a sub sub dictionary under a dictionary so you can have named values but your value can be another dictionary of values so that's what i mean when i say yaml is very flexible um and then this is this is the couple model which is quite messy so you tell it it's the access model you have a list of sub models inside each list is another dictionary of keys and it gets quite elaborate um there's many models and many fields here's a Here's a dict of a list of a dict of a list. So you can have, <laughs> so that's, that's why it's actually quite a useful format because you can do these things quite easily. Um, here's a hierarchy of things to, to set the runtime. Some models support this, some don't. And then you can set environment variables. But the point is I'm um, just to show that these, these files can be as simple or as complicated as you need them to be. And just a note, this is, an old, this is for an old version of PyU, so I don't even know if this works. Um, what are we up to? Okay, so I've said a lot of this, um, but I'm, so I'm not going to go over all these, but um, I want to say that one thing I noticed is a lot of people have a lot of stuff in their config YAML files that don't need to be there. Um, one thing I tried, I tried to have done is make sure everything has a sensible default value. So often something doesn't, often they don't need to be as big as they are. Um, so I, I've started to document some of the default values here. But um, if, if you have questions about it, I mean, it's worth sort of going over that these things can be trimmed down a fair bit. I don't know if it's necessary, but it, it's sometimes helpful and keeps things consistent. Like, for example, if you want to share your config file with another person, you probably don't want to put your project in there because their project won't be the same as yours. If you just leave it blank, then it will just use the environment variable for project. And so everybody's good. Um, Nem is another one. Um, often, if you don't put the RAM there, it will just use the maximum RAM on the node. You don't have to request five, you know, a terabyte of memory because if you request a thousand cores, you're going to get two thousand terabytes, or two thousand gigabytes. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I would. That's just some tips, I guess. Um, if you want to run on the Broadwell nodes, um, you need. We default to a platform for the Sandy Bridges, mostly because there's more of them, so therefore it's easier to get on. It's not quite true, but um, if you want to run on the Broadwells, you do have to kind of tell it that you're running on something with 28 nodes. Uh, the reason for that is that um, NCPUs often does not need to match the node. Um, if you give it, if if you're running on the Sandy Bridge, or if you give it the platform information for the Broadwells. It will adapt. It will adjust NCPUs to match your node. So you don't need to do awkward calculations to make sure that you're exactly a multiple of 16 or 28 or whatever 
or even try to find a magic number that fits both of those cases. Just put the amount you need and PiU will pad it up and just fix it for you. It will complain that you're wasting CPUs, but don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just an annoying program. Um, I got screwed there. Okay. Um, last thing is, um, this is a bit of a feature, so I'm going to go back to um, the experiment here. So we ran another job there while I was talking. Um, if you want to, if you're not confident on how your job looks, you can do a PyU setup. That does not run the job, that just creates the work directory here, or the symbolic link to the work directory. Um, and if you go in there, you will see what is in the actual job that's running. So we see our config files here, we see the PyU config, if we go in input, we see symbolic links to all the input files that we pulled in with the um, config file. So in this case, um, we actually did something a little different from before. We actually pulled in the inputs and the restarts. So here's an input file and here's the restarts. So this, was, this is already setting us up to do the second run of the first one that we already did. So that's an example of that as well, which I didn't intend to <laughs> explain. But um, so PyU setup does clash with PyU run, so you need to do a PyU sweep before you do another PyU run. But um, PyU setup is great for testing. Aiden made it for us. It's a wonderful <laughs> feature. It saves many problems when your jobs crash. Um, so everyone say thank you to Aiden. Thank you, Aiden. OK, thank you. All right, so if anyone's bored and I'm going over stuff, let me know. And I, you know, if you want to ask questions, this is a good time. All right, you've run out of time. All right, um, what, what, how much time are we up to? I haven't been keeping track. So we're a half hour in? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, that's great. So, um, so I'll just, maybe I'll just quickly go over these features. Um, there's a lot of stuff in Paiu, and, um, some of it's useful, some of it's not useful to anybody but one person who asked for it. But um, I'll, I'll go over some of it. Um, so one feature is um, to run multiple jobs. So this is what most people are actually doing. So to use, to use Raijin if properly, you're not supposed to do 48-hour jobs. You're supposed to do 48 one-hour jobs because that's the best way to keep the load balance on the machine. So I didn't know that. What? Yeah, sorry, I couldn't hear that. Was there a question? Okay, no. Okay, so um, to do that, you did the dash n. So if you do dash n without any information, it will just start from the, la the latest job in the archive, the latest restart. So if I do n5, it will do five subsequent jobs. And Maybe those will happen while I'm talking. That would be very interesting. That would be nice. Um, so um, generally speaking, we don't we save all the outputs, but we don't save all the restarts. Now, if you're one of those strange people who does you does diagnostics on restarts, then you might want. To <laughs> <I am. laughs> I wrote his name in my notes, but I didn't. <laughs> it's not on the slide. Um, then there is a way to control that. Um, so, I mean, if people are wondering, there was a historical reason for that. It's because um, the people that run really big jobs were just saving enormous amounts of restart files. And it was really taking up an ungodly huge amount of space. And so we made the decision to default to saving every fifth restart. Plus, we save, we don't just save the fifth restart. I believe we saved the five prior restarts as well. Am I right about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I've, I've seen, I've seen that. And as soon as it uh, reaches the fifth, it deletes the other four, okay. and then. You... Oh, so it, so it is, it is. That, that was my question. Yeah, does it actually right. save the last five, or does it save up to the fifth? Up to the fifth. Okay. Oh, no, it's the last five. Oh, it is the last five. I, uh, I, it's always the last five. It's always the last five. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, clean up the other ones or something. Yeah. Like that. That's great. I wasn't sure if that was working correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We can hear you. There's a bit of a snafu with soft links, though, on restarts, right? Where if you do a soft link to a restart file and then it tries to delete it and it crashes, the, it'll stop the run because it doesn't like the soft link. 
I don't know. That's right. Uh, is that a is that a known bug? Yeah, but it won't crash the well anyway. You just have to delete it. Yeah, it is a known. Yeah, I know, but it's just a it's a bit of a snafu that happens every once in a while. There's a great place to let people know about that. It's called <laughs> the issues page. So this is a great great transition. Thank you, Paul. What, what was the issue? What is the issue exactly? So the issue is if you want to start from someone else's run, and so you do a soft link to their restart directory mm -hmm. in, in, into your in your archive. Yeah, yeah. And then once you get once you've gone five restarts, it'll try and it'll try and delete that one. But it's a it's a soft link to someone. Ah, uh, okay. And someone else's directory you can't link it and it crashes. You know, you just have to delete it. You mean because it's in someone else's directory? Basically. Oh, okay. That 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 leads to a different place that we'll hopefully get to. But yes, yeah. Okay, I, I believe that. Anyway, um, I think that that's important to know about. Um, if your restarts start disappearing like mad, um, there's a reason. It's because of people running big jobs. <laughs> um, in the, um, I guess what I'd... Yeah, sorry. Yes. Maybe, maybe Andrew could finish. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, sometimes, I mean, one of the requests with, the, with um, Access Home 201 was to save annual restart files. And it didn't play terribly nicely with that thing because I was altering the, the, the run length. Yeah. And so then it was just yeah, it was messing things up. Um, so I actually ended up writing a different a different script that goes through and looks individually and, and saves exactly the first one okay. of each year. That's interesting. So if anybody has any interest in something like that, I can share that. But, um, that's all. Yeah, that, that's a good point though. I mean this is this is experiment index, not runtime. Yeah. So it saves the last five runs. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> That's a really good point. Yeah. Now, it, to you know, we, we could we could actually that's that's an improvement we could we could talk about. Okay, gotcha. But um, yeah, for now, I think that that raises a really good point. <clears throat> um, as I I've already mentioned this, but you can change the pads. You can control things a lot. Um, it might be a little nutty to change the control directory, <laughs> but <laughs> but you can you can do these things. Um, I, I guess the main point here is suppose you're running out of x77 but you want to be charged under a different project so you would you would need to change the short path to something in x77 but set your project to e14 or whatever you're in so um, that I, I think most of you understand this issue by now but for those that don't that that's short path is probably one that gets set a fair bit for that reason because of all the I mean especially because x77 and v45 are separate in name only. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, I shouldn't say that. No. Um, <laughs> Overlapping subsets. Okay, <laughs> I'll leave it. Andy's giving me dirty looks, I'll just shut up. Um, it's being recorded. You can't record that I'm giving you a dirty look. <laughs> I don't need to, it's on the video. <laughs> um, um, MPI is quite configurable. Um, you would not do most of this stuff. I just put the whole the whole gamut of MPI settings here. But you know, MPI. We all run MPI jobs. That's the reason we're submitting. So it, it's helpful to have kind of a fronting face to MPI. Um, often you'll want to set the module of the version that you use to build it. Um, where Aiden and I are not quite clear on the rules on when this is set automatically and not set. But I would say at least until we know. Um, Certainly set it. I've had trouble. The biggest trouble I've had is with people setting it and then having an incompatible. Yes. Excuse oh, yeah, that, that, that's true, in fact. And, and I've um, never had a trouble with them not setting it. OK, all right. Well, maybe, maybe we don't want to set this. Maybe, maybe I, you know, I, I live in a quite different space where I'm testing MPI libraries all the time. Um, maybe I think the one that I would want to raise is flags, because most of you are used to having an MPI run in your config YAML. Um, that's fine. It's still supported, but I would call it the old way of setting flags. We're, we're trying to sort of create more hierarchical config. You could put it under MPI flags and then your list of flags. The double dash is awkward there. Just understand the first dash is labeling a list element and the second dash is fed into MPI run. Um, but yeah, I guess that's the only thing I would mention there, just because that one is a quite a common component of these files. Uh, this is a feature that I don't know if really gets a lot of traction. I don't know how popular it is, but you can actually inject scripts into Pyu. So if you don't like something that Pyu is doing or if you wish it had a feature, 
you can request the feature or you can literally just write your own script and put it in. So init um, is, a, is a script or a command. You can put a shell command in there as well that just runs after initialization. Setup is something that runs after setup is complete but before run. Run is something that is finished after run. Maybe I should call them after setup and after run, but um, that's what they are. Um, Postscript is actually very old. It's, it actually runs after something called Payucollate, which if you know what it is, great. If you don't, don't worry about it. But um, my main point is if there's something that you don't like that you need to do in between setup and run, you can do it. Um, in fact, many, many jobs and things that eventually find their way into the Payu code often start here. So can I ask something? Yeah. So I'm using PostScript. You're arguing that instead of PostScript, I should be doing user script run. No, no, probably I'm not. So I'm uh, glad you asked that. OK. Um, <laughs> OK. This is what I understood. Um, it's that run occurs after the job has run. But if yeah. you're doing a PyU collate, which merges the outputs yeah. into a single file, PostScript happens after that. OK. Um, it's, so it's an unfortunate put, name. It's because PostScript existed before user scripts. Okay. If you put, uh, under user script, if you put collate sync output to gdata.sh, is that exactly what PostScript is doing? Say that again. If you had, instead of, if you did user scripts, mm -hmm. and then you said collate underneath that, colon, sync output to gdata.sh, is that exactly the same as PostScript? If it existed. That doesn't exist. Oh, collate doesn't exist. No. It's got to be a pi you collate. Okay, sure. Yeah, sorry. That's why I was confused. There was a collate at some point, isn't it? Absolutely. There is a pi you collate command. Ah, um, it's a pi you collate. Okay. I, I have to apologize. I know it's an important command, but I didn't make any information about it here. That's, that's an interesting point, though, right? Like, So if you wanted to post process the data, it has to be collated first, right? And so um, then can you run often, a script often, after yeah. that? So then can you have a user script after the collet process part of is that? You can. That's what PostScript it? does. Okay. So I'm just not listening properly. That's <laughs> fine. No, you are. Right. I'm confusing myself. Yeah. Um, I'm confused about this too, so. Yeah, sh should I should I make another go? Is it No, I think I'm good. No. Are people good? So PostScript is a script that will run after collation. That's right. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry That's if I cool. didn't give the explicit explanation. I was really just making the general point that it is possible to inject these scripts at various stages of the job. I, um, I wish I had known that like four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Some of this stuff isn't that old. Ryan. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, so pay you, <clears throat> pay you collect also uses the config. So if in my case, for example, That's I want to run a post-processing after I've collated both the output and the restart, I could do that using this. I, look, the restart thing is is new. I think Aiden literally just implemented it this week, last week. Well, um, he's doing his own, he's collecting his own restart. We're looking at part of your collect minus two. Oh, oh, yeah, good yeah. question. I think, yes, I think it, I, I, I don't know, but I think it will, yeah. Okay. Because, and that was the other point I wanted to make is that the, I think part of the reason the restarts get so big is because a lot of people don't collate them and they get way smaller when you collate them. I can't remember exactly the numbers, but I compared and it was, it was pretty big. That, that's true now because Aiden implemented compression. Um, yeah. In the past, there was literally no difference. But it also depends um, on the utility or outputs run. So if the if the outputs are re relatively well tiled, it doesn't make quite as much difference. But it is, it is, it can be good. But it, yeah, it's something we'll, I'm working on at the moment. But the other thing is, you don't want to collate a restart before you've used it, right? Mm -hmm. Or and you certainly don't want to be collating it while you use it. No, not while you use it. Yep. So if you were going to put in automatic restart collation, the place to do it would be before you. Um, would be everything but the last oh, five. I, told, I, yeah. I understand your question now, Ryan. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, no, and you raised a good point. That's why you've uh, separated the, the collate uh, from the run, because... It's for me, um, it's historically, yeah. Yeah, because uh, yeah, cause we wanted to use uncollated restarts to resubmit, because yeah. it's, it's faster. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, that's right. 
um, you can see the huge runtime difference in a collated and uncollated restock file. Although right with, with Aiden and Scott's new speed fast collate, which he was trying to get working last Friday, that might not be as big a problem. No, I'm, I'm talking about startup time. Okay. It's still true for startup time. Um, yes, that, that's an amazing thing that Aiden will talk about next week. Um, okay, um, this is, uh, I think um, we've still got about 15 minutes. I think this is the main thing I wanted to share with people because this is quite new to most people. Um, I think um, we still, I mean, we're still trying to figure out how to share experiments. I mean, this tool is four, five years old, six years old, I don't know. And we didn't care about sharing when, when we started working on it. Now it's, it's, I think everybody is constantly sharing experiments like crazy. And, I think we're really just trying to keep up with it. Um, so this is an effort to keep up with it. Um, uh, there we go. Um, so this is something that we have implemented now. I know I've talked about it with you guys already, but I've kind of molded it into a bit of a tech demo here. So we can try to do it together if you like. Um, you can just watch me do it, or we can do it together. Um, we'll go to, so this is my beautiful GitHub account. My wonderful photo that, without the gray hair, and um, so if we want to, um, so suppose we want to share this experiment. I we we know we can do the Git clones between people's directories, but suppose we want to put it in a public place. So what we can do is we can do gh setup, which sets up our job. Oh my God, what happened here? Oh, we have to go inside the directory. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's all, it's all okay. It's all okay. Okay. So, how you GH setup? So, it prompts you for you. So, you need a GitHub account, but I will do that. And they need to give the password. If anybody is using two factor authentication, it just doesn't work. I'm sorry, but I don't give a damn. Um, so, I have set that up. So, now I have an experiment. And if we go here and look at my repositories, Make I have it there. 15 seconds ago. What? So, whoa! So you can immediately upload your Paiu experiments to GitHub this way. So, That's incredible. Um, it's incredible if this is the third time I've told you about it. <laughs> I know, but I've never seen it actually work. It was before. <laughs> you totally demonstrated it. Can, can you go in there? Just click on hole one. You want to go in there? I want to see what it's saved. Yeah, what's in there? Nothing. Nothing. So you have to push it. Git push. Well, pi. Oh, git push might work. Actually, git, git push would work. Um, I, I'm not happy with this step of it. The reason there's a pi you push, I'll explain a little bit later. But um, okay, it'll do that when it runs automatically, right? No, ah. no, it will not. But but there's a slide here. So <laughs> wait, well, you can put it in the um, in the post script in post run. No, no, you don't. Uh, but let's let's get through this. Okay, okay. so everybody's amazed. Everyone's let's, stop interrupting you. Everyone's amazed. That, no, this is good. I'm no longer amazed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'm gonna skip this. Uh, I, you, since you guys are so, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna change the order because you guys are so amazed with what's going on here. Um, oh, I jumped ahead. Why did I do that? Okay. Crazy. Okay. Um, Okay, so let me show you what's happened here. It's created a key in here. Um, and it's, so under, under my .ssh directory, I now have a PyU directory. In there, I have lots of keys. These are all my runs that I've configured from time to time. It's experiment name based. So if you have two experiments with the same name, it's gonna clobber the old key, just to warn you. Um, these are the hiccups that we have to figure out as we go through this. But um, so what PyU's done is it's created an SSH key so that you can just do a PyU push whenever you want. So you can just do that. Now, to your point, no, we're not doing it on every run. This is because this is a new feature. I, I pinged people months ago to start trying it out, and I said, if we like it, and if it adds value, we can explore doing it automatically. But nobody's used it yet, so I don't know what to tell you. Um, but what I'm saying is if, if people like it, if, pe if people do want it to push automatically, that's easy to do. I, I think automatic might be a little too aggressive because it might push crappy, buggy, mm -hmm. broken runs. 
un unwittingly. But um, this is a feature, you know, this is something we have. So um, if people want to start trying it out, that would be great. Um, there's a lot of features here I'm not talking about, but um, it's useful to add a description to your, um, uh, where am I? In the git. So one thing you can do is put a description here. Huh. I am running a bowl. Oh, this is fantastic. And then it will, I'm not going to redo it, but they will pop that description into here. Huh. So that will be your one line description of, of the job. Now, um, I'll, let's get back to the content. Oops. Oh, crap. Run log organization. It's good to have that description. Oh, yeah. Anyway. You don't have to have it That's in your cool. home account. You can have an organization. Um, you can add that oh, right. under okay. here. I have one for my ride and jobs. Um, you have to, I can't create the organization for you at the command line. You have to do that on the website. It's a known limitation of GitHub. The API doesn't permit you to make organizations at the command line. But um, if you go in and make your own organization, you can sync these things. I, I mean, I think it's actually quite useful because your username should be stuff you care about. And this is going to just be an endless stream of garbage of all, all your hundreds and hundreds of experiments. And it'd be nice to have them somewhere else than your main username account. Your main. Um, so I, I think you guys need to start using it before we actually worry about these features. But hey, I, who, I think it's a good spot. to test this out, apart from me? I will. Excellent. OK, now let's get back to the actual thing. I jumped ahead here. Um, so suppose I want to do some testing on this experiment. Do I just go in there and edit stuff and start playing around with it? No, I don't. I make a copy. So git clone bowl one, bowl two. So we have a copy of the experiment now. It, it, has, it, has, it tracks all the history of the old one. Um, so these are the three jobs we submitted. Um, so Paiu didn't really get those labels right. It's, but, better, it's better than just copying it as well, because it doesn't copy all the crap you don't need, and then it copies the configuration. Can I ask a dumb question? Yeah. So that git clone thing you just did there, right? That's only going to, yeah. it's essentially the do, same thing as doing a CP minus R on the config directory. It's not going to set up archive or. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's no not. It, absolutely <laughs> not. Because it will only yeah, exactly, copy the yeah. files. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. It will only copy Thank the you. files you need. I told you it was a dumb question. <laughs> <laughs> Can I add a point? I, I feel like the point of having Git is so you don't have to copy directories. Exactly. You play around, you play around, and then Git saying. I agree with that too. Yeah. And you go back. Ryan is enlightened. He's an enlightened being. Yeah, you can use branches too, Ryan. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And you know what? You don't have to use restarts for diagnostics. <laughs> you do in my case. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's, it's, yeah. Is there like a you clone for cloning experiments? Uh, no, I'm trying not to make a wrapper around Git. Um, I mean, I could make PyU clone, but ultimately it would just be a Git clone. So I don't know if anybody has used some of the tools for the UM, but this is what they do. They just wrap all these other functions around this some other function, and it becomes an unholy mess. Yeah, so it's going to go on YouTube. That I, I want. <laughs> You're right. That was a mistake. <laughs> uh, Rewind. Uh, um, but well, I, I hope there's people in the med office that agree. But um, that's why. That's actually why I don't like how you push because it. I, I'm not sure it's actually necessary. But I think if it can be done with another tool, we need to do it with another tool. We don't want Paiu to be. We don't want it to be this thing that just expands over everything we do. It should just be the, the least of what it needs to be. Can I just make a point about yes. Ryan's, Ryan's point? You're right, Ryan, that you could just edit it in the, in the directory because you've got Git, so it's keeping track of your changes. But that, that, doesn't, that doesn't affect, that, that doesn't help you with your restarts in your output directories. They'll get written over and, and that sort of thing. So if you need a separate run with separate restarts and separate outputs, then you really probably do want to make a new experiment, new config directory. Yeah, if, if you're changing an experiment that's already been run as opposed to changing something in the middle of an experiment that you're going to keep running. Yeah, well, but if you want to fork off and, and do, do try a different thing but still have your other run as well, that's the, that's the slight problem with using Git because the Git 
the Git stuff only works on the configuration. It doesn't work on the restarts or the uploads. And so you can just overwrite them. If, and so you have to sort of be aware that they that you have to, you have to manually look after those the restarts and the uploads. So so question. Let's imagine that I want to do a run that say Andrew's doing, and I want to I want to take his um, experiment and rerun the last ten years, right? Yeah. So the way I think you're saying I should do this is I should git clone the experiment, right? Does he need GH setup done for me to no. do that? No? no, right? Okay, just git clone his experiment, and then how do I make the archive? Do, will a Pi you setup make an archive for me? No. In okay. fact, this is when when I say we have I haven't figured out how to share. This is one of the biggest problems. We don't have a good strategy for sharing restart files. Okay, so I make my own archive and put the relevant restart, copy the relevant restart in copy, the CP. Copy can take an hour sometimes. That's, yeah. still, that's what I'm I, very when patient. I, when, I, when I branched off to do experimental things, that's what I've done. Yeah, and um, I, I think it's a problem. It's, it's a sharing yeah, exactly. problem. Exactly. So but the, 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 the problem next, is you need to know which restart to copy the next, and how you're going to code that in Pi. Yeah. The next one we do, um, we'll cover the manifest stuff, which isn't there yet, but will be there, and that will allow you to do what you want. Because I, it will uniquely identify all the, res all the inputs that went with a particular commit. So if you that, check out that commit, then you, you'll you be able to run it straight off, as long as those files still exist. On the same yeah, sort so of name that we I mentioned before with the restarts, right, where you want to delete the soft link to make the model yeah. run, that bothers me because then I don't, I like knowing where the where the restart came, where I'm starting from, like what the initial condition was, right? Well, copy it. Copy it in that case. Yeah, but then I don't know where it came from. Well, so come to the next one where I just where I describe why how we solve this problem. Sweet. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I, I should have said Aiden may have solved all these problems. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So this is this is. Probably, you know, we don't have a lot of time. Maybe, maybe I'll just walk. I think, I think the crash stuff is useful. Okay, yeah, let's let's do it. Um, so, let's um, let's make a deliberately bad run. You can run F90 NML if you want, but I'm not going to type. Let's make a huge time step. Let's make a time step of one day, and then we'll do a PyU run. And I don't know how long it will take, um, given given the track record. Well, you can go and do some stuff and come back. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Let's. Um. I, I actually skipped a step. Um. So by changing that, um, I've I've changed. So git diff shows what I changed. So what I can do is I can commit that and say big time step. So do a normal git commit, and now when I do git log, it won't just be these generic crappy PyU messages that we just throw in because I don't know what else to put in. We actually have like some very minimal documentation of what we've just done. We just changed the time step. Yeah, I mean, obviously you wouldn't need to write that. You would say why you changed the time step. <laughs> and I would actually encourage people to start doing git commit dash A instead of dash A M because that will open up a, a window and it will allow you to write more than one line about what's going on. <laughs> Um, maybe I'll even change something just to do it. Non change. Just to so, so the so. reason I've always shied away from that is because I never know where my experiments are being committed to. Mm. So, having this organization underneath your GitHub, and doing this GitHub personal or GitHub. Git? What are we talking about? Yeah, here? whatever. The organization. No, it's thing. not whatever. What are you talking about? Well, to me, they're the same thing. So, so that's Git. why you don't, you don't know, Andy. Yes. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. If, um, That's why you don't know exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, only so that it appears on your GitHub page, so that you can push the configuration up. Do you want it up on your GitHub page? Yeah. Yeah. Because then you can. Okay. Well, then that's what the. That's what the push yeah. stuff is for. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, um, but I did. I mean, this is this is my pet peeve, and has nothing to do with Pi, but I really want to recommend people. Stop writing one-line commits. I'm serious. Write a one-line here <laughs> saying "big time step." Then go down here and say, "I made a big time step because, I love because I'm stupid and I don't like short messages." You know. <laughs> and there you go. I mean, now you have an actual documentation of what you did. So it's like, 
Now, unfortunately, Mike, this still hasn't, hasn't so, what? <laughs> this still hasn't triggered, so I can't even show you what I wanted to show you. <sighs> I'm sorry these jobs are taking so long. Normally it's a lot quicker. Um, but anyway, um, let's imagine we ran this, even though it didn't, and it will crash, and we'll get very, very angry. So what do we do when our job crashes? Well, normally, luckily, I cut and paste what you get. Basically, um, when your job crashes, um, we'll flip this up, hopefully. Um, when your job crashes, mom out and mom error won't be moved in the archive. They'll be kept in the same directory you ran it. And work will still be there as well, as I said. And so you just, I mean, how do you know? I mean, you, you can add stuff to email you when, when it crashes. I, I don't use it, but um, PBS does support that. But either way, um, you go in mom error, you know, you look in standard error, and in I mean, this case, it's quite easy because mom actually knows it's an unstable timestamp. <laughs> and um, so it, it just prints an error and tells you, and so you, it, you, that's easy. Um, so also, the other thing it does, which hopefully I'll have time to show you, I know it's, I know it's two o'clock now, um, it will just be in the error log. So maybe we'll just leave it there. Um, is that it? Oh yeah, a couple of models. Aiden, Aiden will talk about a couple of models next week. So just real quickly, um, you store them in hierarchies. So um, in your input, input, I'm going to go to one. I'll just show you. So oh, that's a big one. Um, so um, instead of just having all your input files in the control directory, you actually have subdirectories for each submodel. The name is set in the config YAML. So here we have name atmosphere. That denotes the name of the directory will be atmosphere. So inside atmosphere are your YATAM configs, inside ocean are your MOM configs, and so on. And so um, Aiden will go over that more. But the point is, Pi, you can support a couple models. So I think I will leave it. Um, I'll skip the troubleshooting. That's, that's CMS's job. <laughs> Unless people want me to. Do people want to go wrap it up? Is there a cry to continue? Or should we just wrap it up? OK, we'll wrap it up. Um, that's what we do. Um, these are the people that have helped me a lot. Paul. Space is gone. He's gone. He missed, he missed his sh shining glory. Paul was the guinea pig. Uh, Nick and Aiden have helped a lot. And I just want to stress that um, this, this doesn't change unless you guys tell me what to do, unless you tell Aiden what to do, et cetera. Like, like, we need feedback to make it better. If it's crap, then tell us why it's crap, and we'll fix the crap. So I will leave it there. Thank you.